Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I'm your host, and I'm joined by Alicia, Alicia Snell, who is uh, a motivational speaker, personal trainer, running coach, author, and founder of Weeks to Wellness program. Uh, her personal story of weight loss and transformation has inspired many and has attracted media attention, including Oprah. Grateful that she's on the show. She's based in Oakville, Ontario. And of course, later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for the top tip on living a successful life. You'll hear Alicia's. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shannon, for inviting me. I feel like I've known <laughs> you for so long. We've had some great conversations, haven't we? We have. Yeah. Now, you ran a half marathon I this did. weekend. I did. Yes, on, on Sunday. It was, great. It, it was great fun. Yeah. It was really fun. It was a little drizzly, but uh, actually that's great for runners, so that's not a complaint. It was fun. It was uh, in Cleveland. It was the rock and roll half marathon, so there was rock and roll. There were rock and roll bands, and it was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. There, those races are really about crossing the finish line and having a good time in the process. Now, you, you have participated in a number of marathons or half marathons. Yes, I have. I've done 18 full marathons, wow. including Boston twice. And half marathons, I've lost track of. It's 50 or 60 or 70. I, I haven't counted them up. Well, you brought your, you, you did bring uh, your, your I brought medal. My, my medal because it's so weekend. funky. It's, it's it. so fun. I don't know. Can you see it? It's got this whole twirly, twirly guitar yeah. thing on it. So that's kind of like a fun bonus at the end Great. of the run. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Now, now you've been you know, running marathons, and of course, vitality uh, and health is very important to you. Yeah. Um, you're a very active uh, woman yep. now. But of course, you haven't always been. No. So, you know, you are um, a woman who has gone through a remarkable transformation and, and journey, so I would love to talk about that. Right. What's your life, life, uh, life like um, once a t upon a time ago before you began your transformation? I always struggled with my weight. So between the age of zero to 42 years of age, I lost twice significant amounts of weight. But other than that, other than those sort of blips, I, I was always heavy. I was always the tallest and the biggest kid in the class. I always felt larger than people around me. I, I remember that life very clearly because I weighed 328 pounds. I was at one point the largest dress size in the clothing store. And I, and I remember thinking, what are you going to do if you gain any more weight because there is no bigger size at that point. And at that point, I mean, this was 11, 12 years ago, there weren't a lot of larger clothing stores for women as there are now. So I was kind of limited. And my life was, it was like this. For example, I remember getting on an airplane and I couldn't do the buckle up. So when I finally, finally, in a panic, managed to do it up because I knew that stewardess was going to be walking down the aisle, I would sort of exhale, do it up, and then my stomach would cover the fact that the belt was done up. So that's how I would start a vacation. Um, going through a turnstile was impossible for me. I couldn't do it. I had to turn sideways. So anytime I went to the cinema, anytime I went to, you know, to, on the subway, it was problematic for me. And of course, because it was so embarrassing, I would... Um, you know, sort of nonchalantly. I remember nonchalantly looking into my purse, playing with my purse, and then turning sideways like it was something I needed to do rather than something I had to do. So that's what my life was like. I was always tired. I was irritable. I had water on the knee. I had all kinds of health issues. I was, I was unhappy. Now, you lost 173 pounds. Yeah. Now, 173 pounds, that's actually more than I weigh. That's so it's actually quite remarkable. Yep. But there was a moment. Yeah. There was a moment in your life when you said, enough. Yeah. I want to change my life. I want to lose weight. What was that moment? It was a weekend like any other weekend in my life. And it was a series of small little things that led up to this moment. So, for example, a girlfriend standing on a chair getting a crock pot down for me. And I thought... That would be something I would really need to plan and think about. It was a wicker chair. So I wouldn't be standing on a wicker chair because I'm worried about going to the bottom. And then um, 
I remember going to a show with my son, and they did all these different things with him. And at the end, he said to me, would you go horseback riding with me, Mama? And I thought, no. So this particular day, after these things were sort of becoming apparent to me, um, we came home, and he took a picture of me in front of this piano I had just purchased for him. In those days, there were no digital. But it was one of those Polaroid cameras when the picture came shooting out the bottom. So it was undeniable, in my face, in an instant. And when I saw that photo of myself sitting on the piano bench, the first thing I thought was, you could hardly see the piano. And the second thing I thought was, oh my God, that cannot be what I look like. That cannot be me. Went to Costco the next day, picked up a set of scales. I stood on the scales and I weighed 28 pounds. Went from zero, past the 300 to 28. And that was the moment where I thought, that's not possible. You cannot weigh 328 pounds. I, thought, I felt like the fat lady at the circus. It was awful. And that's the moment I decided, you cannot live this life anymore. And what are you going to do to make this weight loss different, this new approach to living different than the other two times you st lost weight, which were stress-related, and I just stopped eating. The problem with that is you have to eat eventually or you're going to die. So you've <laughs> got to right. come up we with do, a better plan. We, yeah, we need food. But you, you, yeah. mean, you really changed your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really what was the major change that enabled you to not only take off this weight, but you've kept it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you've done something that many, many, many people out there wish they could do but haven't been able to. So what's been the secret? You know, thank you. I love that question. Because that's what everyone is waiting to hear. And um, this is the thing. Everyone knows how to eat properly. W when I do nutritional and wellness counseling, I don't start out by A, B, C, D, because people know how to eat well. They know they need to eat more fruits and vegetables. They know they need to reduce their processed food, eat whole grains, and, and, and smaller protein portions. So everyone knows that. That's not the issue. The issue is deciding that you want to eat well by modifying your behavior. So if you think you're on a diet for the rest of your life, that's so depressing. It's not going to work. Who wants to live that life? I made the decision to get healthy. That was my decision. Not necessarily to lose weight. I, you know, I never picked this time. I never picked a weight. I never picked a dress size. I just thought, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to live that life. So. What are we going to do? We're going to eat well and we're going to start moving around. And that is dynamic. That changes. Moving around at 328 pounds is a lot different than moving around now. I couldn't have run. I could barely walk. So I just got more and more active, more and more active. I started in my basement. I was too embarrassed to exercise in public. I wasn't going to do that. But again, I knew enough to just sort of put some music on, move around, and once I started eating well, eating properly, the weight flew off, flew. How would you define wellness then? Wellness is caring for what you put into your body, what you eat. Mm. It's it, implementing some kind of exercise and it's caring about your well-being and your state of health. That's the wellness portion of it. All of those three things combined can lead you to the vitality that you are looking for. And it's not a life of denial. It is a life of embracing a different behavior, modifying your behavior. So if you think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to eat blank again, that's pretty depressing. How about I can eat all of these things, I am going to feel so great that my world will be limitless. When I ran the Boston Marathon, I started running. We, we had had dinner the night before in a restaurant. And I started thinking about, bef before I'd lost that weight, what my meal would be in a restaurant. And this is what it would have been. Gnocchi with uh, creamy gorgonzola sauce, lots of garlic bread, Caesar salad, which was my vegetable. Um, and then I would have ended with chocolate cake or tiramisu. And if I had continued to eat that way, I for sure would have been a diabetic by now. I already had high blood pressure. I was chronically fatigued. 
all of those things. I would be that person instead of this person having this incredible adventure running the Boston Marathon. Well, that's really great. I mean, your and your adventure, not just in running the Boston Marathon, but I mean, it's been quite an adventure. Yes. Um, taking, a, getting, you know, living a healthy life. I was when I was in Cleveland yesterday, as we were leaving, I saw this billboard, and it was so fabulous. It just so rang true for me. It said, "Healthy makes everything different. Healthy changes everything." I did not know that. I didn't get that when I started out on this journey. It wasn't about losing some pounds. It was about my life completely changing. What I do for a living, the people I surround myself with, um, how I feel, how I look, my health, everything. That's vitality. It's living this wonderful, positive life by making choices that are going to make your life better. Now, Alicia, um, you've... Um had uh, the great benefit of uh, the attention of media and yeah. particularly Oprah. Yes. You got to go on the Oprah show. That was show. so much fun. <laughs> yes, it, was it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. absolutely. They called, the producer called every day for a week and would have sort of interview questions. I think they wanted to make sure that you could st sort of string a sentence together and express yourself. The name of the show was called Incredible Weight Loss Stories. It was such an amazing experience. There were nine of us on the show. We all lost between 125 to 300 pounds and all of us spoke about that experience as a journey the energy with all of these people around was just so uplifting because again it wasn't just about losing weight and becoming a different dress size and becoming skinny that was so beside the point it was about feeling fully alive like you finally had reached that potential and you could do whatever you wanted that's such a fabulous feeling, and that's what Oprah gave me by inviting me onto that show. It was so much fun. Now, uh, we're going to take a break, and before we do, I've got my Good to Know Minute. Yes. And Alicia, I <laughs> absolutely know without any hesitation or doubt that you've got a great tip for my viewers. I thought a lot about this, and this is what came to me. It is our choices that determine our lives. If you can imagine your goal, your dream, and believe that you can do it by whatever modifications or changes you need to make to get there, then commit to it, make a plan, and make it your priority. You will empower yourself to go wherever it is you want to go, whatever your goal, whatever your dream. Because I've done that not once, I've done it many times. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, more with Alicia Snell. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I'm your host, and uh, I'm joined by guest Alicia Snell, um, who's a motivational speaker, personal trainer, running coach, author, <laughs> and of course, founder of the Week Weeks to Wellness program. Um, tell us a little bit about that. That is a, a program that I've developed. It's actually live now. We haven't officially launched it. Um, I wanted to create something that was going to be really affordable and uplifting for people who wanted to start on uh, a journey towards their journey towards wellness. So basically, it is a it's ninety nine dollars for a lifetime subscription. That includes an audio book that should be up and running within the, uh, a week or two. The audio book will be sent to you. So if you register, uh, you will get this audio book, which is uh, the book that I have written about my journey. And the weeks to wellness includes uh, a motivational quotation, sort of a wellness musing. Uh, then uh, nutritional information and guidance, uh, a recipe from my cookbook, and then a fitness information and guidance as well. So this is an online service. Uh, it changes every week where I'll be broaching a new topic and giving you new information. So that's all on my website. Now, of course, uh, you also have uh, a new web website is... www.alishasnell.com. So just my name. Great, perfect. Now, of course, you have a book too. I do. Uh, me minus uh, 173, and I'm just going to show the uh, book cover there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, and where's your book available? My book is available. The best place to get it is on my website because I have a sort of a PayPal thing set up there, so it's easy to order through there. Okay, great. So yeah. again, aliciasnell.com. Yes. Um, now. We were talking a bit about uh, your journey, having lost weight, um, 
in your journey to health and fitness. Yes. We have some photos uh, that we want to show. So yes. um, we're just going to just get set up here. And Dan is uh, uh, going to take a, a shot. Um, so this is the photo that we talked about. Um, maybe you could just explain it. This is the photo that I spoke about where it, it uh you know, turbo jetted me into deciding that I didn't want to look like this anymore. This is the photo that my son took in front of, in front of the piano. Um, and it's also in the background of the cover of my book. And, and now then, this. Yes, and okay. this. This is, tra this is transformation at its best. This is when I ran the Boston Marathon the first time in April of 2002. And that was wow. truly a dream fulfilled. Look at that. That was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, so this is fantastic. Um, so anyone who, and it's not just necessarily about losing weight. Anyone who wants to live a healthy lifestyle could uh, get in touch with you about your weeks to wellness program. Absolutely, there I. Book. I offer lots of services. I also have a, a cookbook that I created because. Life without Good dessert is not worth living. So, but I wanted to make desserts count. So. I created a whole pile of recipes on, you know, healthy eating, healthy living that was not like eating deprivation eating, so that it was nutritious and fast and easy and fun and you could cook it for a company as well. Um, I actually created it because I was teaching a lot, of, a lot of running clinics at the time and people were saying to me, what do you eat? So I got tired of emailing recipes, so I put them into a book. Well, good for I you. I them available, yeah. Now, does, uh, if we could just talk a little bit about weight gain, um, what what does Janetta oh thank have you to do with thank it? you for asking that question, Shannon. This is a really great question. I kind of grew up feeling like Jabba the Hutt, you know, like I was bigger than everyone. But when my son was born, and I s sort of got a little bit more objective about it, I realized that he would be eating the same fast foods, high fat fast foods that his friends were eating and he wasn't he was gaining weight and his friends weren't and I have always felt that genetics plays a huge part in understanding why you gain weight this is not to say that you cannot lose the weight it just makes you feel less like a glutton to understand that if I eat these foods I am going to gain a lot of weight whereas someone else may not necessarily gain that weight the thing is both of them are not healthy. It doesn't matter whether you gain the weight or not. If you eat that way, it is not healthy. And I'm now uh, am partnering with this uh, organization called Newtopia. And they are the first organization that I have come across who actually do genetic testing to determine whether you have these genes that will influence how you eat, your behavior, that sort of thing. So, Newtopia. Newtopia. It's right. a wonderful organization. And again, if you go on my website, if you contact me, depending on who you are and what your needs are, I can channel you through to you know whatever it is I think is going to support you the best. Now, what does one do, or what would be your your suggestions if if one has a friend who wants to lose weight, who is you know considerably a plus size and mm -hmm. wants to lose weight, um, maybe drops hints now and again. Um, Maybe they don't do something about it. Maybe they do, but how do you handle that? And you don't want to, as their, as a, as a friend, family member, or as a friend, mm -hmm. you don't want to say anything that is that is going to be offensive. Yes. You, but you want to be supportive. Yes. So wh what does one do? Well, again, a great question because I get asked this a lot. As a parent, I decided because of my past in, in always feeling larger, bigger, inadequate, no self-esteem, that I was never going to make my son feel that way, ever. I was never going to say to him, oh, you have such a pretty face, with the inference being the rest of you is a disaster, because that's how I heard those comments. What I would do instead is, if he wanted to go to a fast food place, I would take him there, and he could order whatever he wanted. But what I did is I would take my you know, rye crackers, and I would take my low-fat cheese, my skim milk cheese, I would take my fruits and my vegetables and my hummus, and that's what I would eat. Until one day, my son turned around to me and said, I don't want to go there anymore, Mama. And I, of course, had to hold myself in check <laughs> from cheering, and I said, why, honey? And he said, because, you know, when you squeeze the burger and you see all this grease coming out of it, that's gross. 
But it wasn't me telling him what to do. You don't need to tell people what to do. You need to guide them and support them and love them. So if they're interested in losing weight, you know, ask them to join you and going to the gym. Have them take a look at someone who's done it. Have them go to my website because there's many different approaches and what is right for one person may not be right for the other. They need, people need to be loved and supported on their journey, not criticized, not told, did you eat the rest of that cake? Did you eat that whole thing? Because that's not helpful. It just makes you feel worse. Just makes you want to eat more cake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What yeah. about uh, the um, excess skin uh, oh. after you after someone loses uh, a lot of weight? I mean, what was that an issue that you were faced with? It was a huge issue for me. After I had lost all of my weight, I remember this. I was in the gym and I was doing tricep kickbacks, and I looked down and my tummy sort of went down. This is the skin on my stomach, went down and then sort of blossomed out into this like mushroom, weird mushroom shape. And I looked at that and I thought. I don't like that. It doesn't make me feel good. I've done all this work and I really don't like that. Making the decision to have cosmetic surgery was really hard for me. Hard, hard. I was one of those people that thought, how can you spend that much money on yourself when there are, you know, children starving in wherever? It just seemed so frivolous until one day my girlfriend turned to me and said, putting in a new driveway. I said, yeah. She said, it looks great. How much does it cost? So I told her and she said, great. So you care more about your driveway than about what you see in the mirror when you look back. Because you know, it was about the same price. <laughs> and that's when I thought, again, you need to shift your thinking. You need to shift your thinking. Can you do this? Is it important to you? Can you find a way to make this work? Yes, I could find a way to make, to make it work. And when I went in to have the surgery, it was just excess skin that was removed. There was no liposuction, there was no fat being taken out, and I am so pleased because I like the effect. It makes me feel good. Well, it's been quite, uh, quite uh, an inspiring journey that you've had yeah. and uh, very, very inspiring for me. So thank you for coming on to the show and, and sharing your journey. And unfortunately, we're at a time I could be talking to you forever. So <laughs> Thank you so much, Shannon, for, for having the vision to have this kind of a show to help empower others to get where it is they want to go. That's, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. Special thanks to my friends and family for your ongoing support, to the folks at that channel, and also to Cinderella Miranda, who is uh, often here in the, in the studio audience t taking photos and being a great source of support. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. See you soon.